the startling guest at Curly Howard's funeral who shocked everyone. Curly Howard is best remembered as a member of the American slapstick comedy team, The Three Stooges, which also featured his older brothers Mo Howard and Shemp Howard and actor Larry Fine. Curly is often considered the most popular and recognizable of the Stooges. He was known for his high-pitched voice, vocal expressions, as well as his inventive physical comedy, improvisations, and athleticism. In this video, we will unravel the startling guest at Curly Howard's funeral who shocked everyone. Watch till the end of this video to find out who this guest was. Curly Howard was born Jerome Lester Horwitz in the Bensonhurst section of the Brooklyn borough of New York City on October 22, 1903, of Lithuanian Jewish ancestry. He was the youngest of the five sons of Jenny and Solomon Horwitz. Because he was the youngest, his brothers called him Babe to tease him. The name Babe stuck with him all his life. Although, when his elder brother Shemp Howard married Gertrude Frank, he was also nicknamed Babe. The brothers called him Curly to avoid confusion. A quiet child, Howard rarely caused problems for his parents. He was a mediocre student but excelled as an athlete on the school basketball team. He did not graduate from high school and instead he kept himself busy with odd jobs and constantly following his older brothers, whom he idolized. He was also an accomplished ballroom dancer and singer, and regularly turned up at the Triangle Ballroom in Brooklyn, occasionally bumping into George Raft. When Howard was 12, he accidentally shot himself in the left ankle while cleaning a rifle. Mo rushed him to the hospital, saving his life, but the wound resulted in a noticeably thinner left leg and a slight limp. Because Curly was afraid of surgery, he never had his limp fixed. During his time with the Three Stooges, he learned to walk in an exaggerated way to hide his limp. Curly wasn't the only one who experienced a childhood accident. At four years old, Larry suffered a chemical burn in his father's jewelry shop when he spilled oxalic acid on his arm, which burned its way through the skin, exposing his muscles. Receiving a skin graft, doctors suggested he take up boxing to strengthen the damaged tissues, but his mother persuaded him to take violin instead. He later became a gifted musician, and at the age of nine, he played for the Philadelphia Orchestra. Mo Howard's iconic bowl cut was actually the result of childhood rebellion. As a boy, Howard's mom refused to cut his hair, keeping it shoulder length, which caused him to be a target of frequent teasing at school. During an interview on The Mike Douglas Show, he revealed, I used to fight my way to school, in school, and back home from school. Fed up with the constant bullying, Mo stole a pair of scissors and cut his hair in his backyard's shed. Curly was also interested in music and comedy. He watched his brothers Shemp and Mo perform as the Stooges in Ted Healy's vaudeville act. He also liked to hang out backstage, even though he never did any of the acts. Howard married his first wife, Julia Rosenthal, on August 5, 1930, but the marriage was annulled shortly afterward. Howard's first onstage break was as a comedy musical conductor in 1928 for the Oroville Knapp Band. Mo later recalled that his performances usually overshadowed those of the band. Though he enjoyed the gig, he watched as brothers Mo and Shemp with partner Larry Fine made it big as some of the Ted Healy Stooges. Vaudeville star Healy had a very popular stage act in which he would try to tell jokes or sing, only to have his Stooges wander on stage and interrupt or heckle him and cause disturbances from the audience. Meanwhile, Healy and company appeared in their first feature film, Rube Goldberg's Soup to Nuts, in 1930. Shemp, however, soon tired of Healy's abrasiveness, bad temper, and alcoholism. In 1932, he was offered a contract at the Vitaphone Studios in Brooklyn. With Shemp gone, Mo suggested that Curly fill the role of the Third Stooge, but Healy felt that with his thick chestnut hair and elegant waxed mustache, he looked too good for the part. Howard left the room and returned minutes later with his head shaven. Howard's childlike mannerisms and natural comedic charm made him a hit with audiences, particularly children. He was known in the act for having an indestructible head, which always won out by breaking anything that assaulted it, including saws, resulting in his characteristic quip, Oh, look! Although having no formal acting training, his comedic skills were exceptional. 
By the time the Stooges hit their peak in the late 1930s, their films had almost become vehicles for Howard's unbridled comic performances. Classics such as A Plumbing We Will Go, 1940, We Want Our Mummy, 1938, An Ache in Every Steak, 1941, Cactus Makes Perfect, 1942, and their most violent short, They Stooged to Conga, 1943, displayed his ability to take inanimate objects, food, tools, pipes, etc., and turn them into ingenious comic props. By 1944, Howard's energy began to wane. Films such as Idle Rumors 1944 and Booby Dupes 1945 present a Curly whose voice was deeper and actions slower. He may have suffered the first of many strokes between the filming of Idiot's Deluxe in October 1944 and If a Body Meets a Body in March 1945. After the filming of the feature-length Rockin' in the Rockies, he finally checked himself into Cottage Hospital in Santa Barbara, California on January 23, 1945, and was diagnosed with extreme hypertension, a retinal hemorrhage, and obesity. His ill health forced him to rest, leading to only five shorts being released in 1945. Mo Howard pleaded with Harry Cohn to allow his younger brother some time off upon discharge to regain his strength. But Cohn would not halt the production of his profitable stewed shorts and flatly refused his request. The Stooges had five months off between August 1945 and January 1946. They used that time to book a two-month live performance commitment in New York City, working shows seven days a week. During their time on the East Coast, Howard met his third wife, Marion Buxbaum, whom he married on October 17, 1945, after a two-week courtship. When Howard finally made it back to Los Angeles at the end of November 1945, he was a mere shadow of his former self. After taking a break for two months, the crew started their 1946 schedule at Columbia at the end of January. However, from the beginning of February to the middle of May, they only worked for a total of 24 days. In spite of eight weeks off, in that same period, Howard's condition continued to deteriorate. By early 1946, Howard's voice had become even more coarse than before, and remembering even the simplest dialogue was increasingly difficult for him. He had lost a considerable amount of weight, and lines had creased his face. Half Wits Holiday, released in 1947, was Howard's final appearance as an official member of the Stooges. During filming on May 6, 1946, he suffered a severe stroke while sitting in director Jules White's chair, waiting to film the last scene of the day. When called by the assistant director to take the stage, he did not answer. Mo found his co-star, quote, with his head dropped to his lap and unresponsive except for a few muffled cries. Even though Howard had not yet made a full recovery from his stroke, he was able to meet and marry Valerie Newman on July 31, 1947. After some time had passed, a friend named Irma Leviton recalled that Valerie was the one good thing that occurred to Curly and the only person who truly cared about him. Although his health continued to decline after the marriage, Valerie gave birth to a daughter, Janie, in 1948. Later that year, Howard suffered a second massive stroke, which left him partially paralyzed. He used a wheelchair by 1950 and was fed boiled rice and apples as part of his diet to reduce his weight. Valerie admitted him to the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital on August 29, 1950. In January 1946, Shemp had been recruited to substitute for arresting Curly during live performances in New Orleans. After Curly's stroke, Shemp agreed to replace him in the Columbia shorts, but only until his younger brother was well enough to rejoin the act. An extant copy of the Stooges' 1947 Columbia Pictures contract was signed by all four Stooges and stipulated that Shemp's joining, quote, in place and steed of Jerry Howard, end quote, would be only temporary until Curly recovered sufficiently to return to work full time. Howard, partially recovered and with his hair regrown, made a brief cameo appearance in January 1947 as a train passenger barking in his sleep in the third film after Brother Shemp's return, Hold That Lion, 1947. It was the only film that featured Larry Fine and all three Howard brothers, Mo, Shemp, and Curly, simultaneously. Director White later said he spontaneously staged the bit during Curly's impromptu visit to the soundstage. 
Quote, it was a spur of the moment idea. Curly was visiting the set. This was some time after his stroke. Apparently, he came in on his own since I didn't see a nurse with him. He was sitting around reading a newspaper. As I walked in, the newspaper he had in front of his face came down and he waved hello to me. I thought it would be funny to have him do a bit in the picture and he was happy to do it. End quote. In June 1948, Howard filmed a second cameo as an angry chef for the short Malice in the Palace in 1949. But due to his illness, his performance was not deemed good enough and his scenes were cut. A lobby card for the short shows him with the other Stooges, although he never appeared in the final release. Curly was released after several months of treatment and medical tests at the hospital, although he would return periodically until his death. In February 1951, he was placed in a nursing home where he suffered another stroke a month later. In April, he went to live at the North Hollywood Hospital and Sanitarium. In December 1951, the facility's supervisor told the Howard family that Curly was becoming a problem to the nursing staff at the facility because of his mental deterioration. The family recognized that they were unable to care for him anymore and urged that he be sent to a mental health facility. Moe did not comply, and he transferred him to the Baldy View Sanitarium in San Gabriel, California. Howard had four marriages and two children. Howard's first marriage ended in divorce five months after the union occurred, and prior to his achieving fame with the Stooges. Howard married his second wife, Elaine Ackerman, on June 7, 1937. Their union produced one child, Marilyn, the following year. The couple divorced in June 1940, after which he gained weight and developed hypertension. He was insecure about his shaved head, believing it made him unappealing to women. He increasingly drank to excess and caroused to cope with his feelings of inferiority. He took to wearing a hat in public to convey an image of masculinity, saying he felt like a little kid with his hair shaved off. Despite his low self-esteem, he was popular with women, particularly with those who wanted to take advantage of him. During World War II, for seven months each year, the trio's filming schedule went on hiatus, allowing them to make personal appearances. The Stooges entertained service members constantly, and the intense work schedule took its toll on Howard's health. He never drank while performing in film or on stage. Mo would not permit it. But after the workday had ended, he would head out to nightclubs where he ate, drank, and caroused to excess to cope with the stress of work. He was a lavish spender, particularly when it came to wine, food, ladies, and homes, and he was often on the verge of bankruptcy. Mo was finally able to assist him with managing his funds and even assisting him with filling out his income tax forms. Howard found constant companionship in his dogs and often befriended strays wherever the Stooges traveled. He would pick up homeless dogs and take them with him from town to town until he found them a home somewhere else on the tour. When not performing, he usually had a few pet dogs waiting for him at home as well. The one guest at Curly Howard's funeral no one expected to see was Marion Buxbaum. Mo urged Curly to find himself a wife, hoping it would persuade his brother to finally settle down and allow his health to improve somewhat. After a two-week courtship, he married Marion Buxbaum on October 17, 1945, a union that lasted just nine months. In 1945, Curly's lifestyle was getting the better of him and his performance on set was deteriorating. Mo forced him to be admitted to the hospital, where he was diagnosed with hypertension and obesity, among other things. Mo was convinced that Curly's deterioration was due to his recent divorce and loneliness without Elaine, so he introduced Curly to a relative of the theater manager. Her name was Marion Buxbaum, and Curly took to her instantly. They were married on October 17, 1945, after having known each other for just two weeks. Instantly, he became a stepfather to Marion's 10-year-old son from a previous marriage. The divorce proceeding was a bitter one, exacerbated by exploitative, sensationalistic media coverage which worsened his already fragile health. After the divorce, his health fell into rapid and devastating decline. The divorce was finalized in July 1946, two months after he suffered his career-ending stroke. On July 31, 1947, he married Valerie Newman. They had one daughter together, Janie, born in 1948, and remained married until his death. 
Curly Howard lived the shortest life of the Stooges, dying at the age of 48. Curly Howard's miserable life suffered from retinal hemorrhages, despair, and pain, with complications from two strokes. He was given a Jewish funeral and was buried at the Western Jewish Institute section of Home of Peace Cemetery in East Los Angeles. His older brothers Benjamin and Shemp, who died three years later, and parents Jenny and Solomon are all interred there as well. Life hadn't been kind to him. The kindness and luxury provided by Valerie Newman was the only kind thing that ever happened to Curly, and she was the only one who truly cared about him. Curly Howard will live forever with the fans, and tears will fall when thinking about him. Curly Howard is considered by many fans and critics alike to be their favorite member of the Three Stooges. In a 1972 interview, Larry Fine recalled, quote, Personally, I thought Curly was the greatest because he was a natural comedian who had no formal training. Whatever he did, he made up on the spur of the moment. When we lost Curly, we took a hit, end quote. Curly's mannerisms, behavior, and personality, along with his catchphrases of nyuk, 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 whoop, 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 and sweetly, have become a part of American popular culture. Steve Allen called him one of the, quote, most original yet seldom recognized comic geniuses. Contrary to popular belief, the lives of the Three Stooges weren't all fun and games. Between health scares, shady management, and limitations on their comedic reach, the trio experienced their fair share of disappointment and grief during their career. The Three Stooges' rise to fame happened during the Great Depression, considered one of the darkest times in United States history. In an attempt to lighten the doom and gloom of society, the trio's slapstick comedy made an effort to mock the aristocracy which had previously been glamorized in film. By aligning themselves with the common man and his struggles, the Three Stooges' hilarious antics taught people to laugh in the face of adversity. The years passed, and they were led to believe their comedy was unappreciated by audiences. The Three Stooges gave up on their dream of having a star on the infamous Hollywood Walk of Fame. It was only after the passing of Larry and Curly that the trio finally got their wish and earned their rightful spot in 1983 on 1560 Vine Street. Many attempts to make a film tribute to the Three Stooges were plagued by director doubts and casting mishaps. In 1976, Mel Brooks abandoned plans to make a film starring himself, Dom DeLuise, and Marty Feldman as the lovable trio. In 2005, Mel Gibson released a television biographical film that delved into the private and somewhat painful lives of the actors that left audiences sobbing in their seats rather than crying with laughter. Often the butt of every joke, Curly warmed his way into the audience's hearts as the fan favorite of the trio. However, this lovable stooge hid many insecurities, including a dependency on food and alcohol and intense need for companionship. Curly Howard surely left a mark in the industry of comedy. He will always be remembered by his fans and the rest of the Three Stooges. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.